Okay, so what type of information did I receive prior to going into the assignment and what were my thoughts? Um, well, as part of uh, my best practice uh, approach, I like to pre-conference with the uh, people involved to find out who, what, and why. So as far as the information is concerned um, that I gathered, I gathered who were the, 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 the people I was going to be interpreting for. So in this case, it was a social worker, a deaf social worker, and a deaf uh, a client uh, from Cuba, and, um, and then a sister who spoke Spanish. Um, and so from there, I also tried to determine what was the uh, mode of communication. And so there was going to be Spanish, mostly. Um, the uh, social worker was going to use ASL, but I understand that uh, Angel, um, the brother, the deaf brother, uh, is still learning ASL, so he's highly visual. <clears throat> so it would be using some form of visual gestural communication system. So I. So that's important for me to know so that I could um, uh, prepare myself and, and uh, also uh, predict what kind of challenges I would face in, in trying to ensure effective communication uh, happens. So I, uh, and so why, why are we here? So I, it was my understanding that the appointment had to do with verifying uh, information on a food stamp ap application. So understanding the goals helps me uh, mediate the language and, and, and be sensitive to what the goals of each player is so that I can ensure that that is communicated and they can both uh, uh, get their, their goals met. My thoughts and my concerns uh, before the assignment, uh, when I first um, was asked to do this assignment and was told that trilingual interpreting uh, was needed, um, I wondered, uh, is it going to be primarily going from, AS, from Spanish into ASL or primarily from English into ASL, then Spanish? What was going to be heavy on? What, was it going to be mostly ASL or Spanish or English? Because ASL is my first language. Uh, and as far as English and Spanish, um, even though they did come at the same time, I, I, I mastered English. Uh, more so than I have Spanish, so I, 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 so my thoughts were, if it's um, heavy Spanish voicing, then I have to prepare myself to certain demands that would come up, such as language intrusion from the primary language and the secondary language, and what type of controls I would have to apply to cope with those demands. So you know, getting my set, my head in the zone, so to speak. You know, you really gotta come into it prepared and expecting the unexpected and 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 the expected as well. Mm -hmm. And, and after gathering all of the information it, and understanding what the topic was, what the goals were, um, it also uh, enabled me, allowed me to do a little research uh, of, of what terminology would be used and, and, and whatnot. Um, and also, uh, after finding out that um, the social worker would, uh, it was deaf and would be using ASL, and, but that there would be visual gestural communication involved, immediately I, I felt that there might be a need for a, a certified deaf interpreter because when the conversation between the social worker and the deaf person uh, is in progress, there might be some uh, visual gestural nuances that I am not able to uh, pick up. So this is a, a maximize your language skills situation where you have got to maximize everything you have and if you just don't have what it takes, then you have to uh, uh, seek out other resources, such as a, a certified deaf interpreter. So right now, I'm coming in feeling that there, that might be the situation for me, and so we'll we'll have to wait and see. And uh, at pre-conference, I because the appointment didn't happen right away, I took advantage of the time to to uh, get acquainted with the deaf person and the the sister. And in the course of that uh, conversation. Um, I, estab I found out that, um, that in, in, in Cuba, um, they don't say estampillas de alimentos for food stamps or, or 
food stamps assistance, they say sales de, de comidas. So it was helpful for me because then that's, I want to use the terminology that, that she's familiar with uh, to be culturally sensitive to her because um, uh, I, I, I am familiar with Mexican culture, I am uh, Tex-Mex, and, and it's very different from Cuban culture. So I wanted to take that opportunity to, to become comfortable with her and, and, and establish a trust because it's, uh, uh, trust is a huge thing for high context cultures such as uh, Spanish people in Spanish speaking countries and, and deaf people as well. Mm -hmm. One other thing that I did to take advantage of that pre-conference time uh, before the assignment began was to also talk to the social worker, the deaf social worker, knowing um, what challenges I would face as, uh, 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 because um, the more information I got, it, it was clear that it was going to be heavy Spanish voicing. So immediately I knew that I would, was going to have some demands that I needed to have some controls in place as the assignment uh, uh, began and, and was uh, in progress. So one of the controls um, so that I, that when I came to a, um, a place where I was overwhelmed by the information and my brain was not catching up and not accessing the Spanish words or, or phrases uh, is was to talk to the social worker about establishing a signal between us to let her know when I needed uh, the pace to slow down, you know, to, to, for us to kind of pause for a second for me to catch up and, 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 and make sure that that information was uh, rendered accurately and effectively.